Good to go. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, before commenting on Jack Teixeira's plea to six counts under the Espionage Act, I'm going to ask Assistant Attorney General of the United States, Matt Olson, Assistant Attorney General of the United States for National Security, to make a few comments. Uh, thank you, Josh, and, and hello, everybody. Um, I'm Matt Olson. I'm the Assistant Attorney General for National Security at the Department of Justice. This morning, Jack Teixeira, a member of the U.S. Air National Guard, pleaded guilty to six counts of willful retention and transmission of classified information relating to our national defense. Admitting his guilt in open court to every count he was charged with last June. This guilty plea brings accountability and it brings a measure of closure to a chapter that created profound harms for our nation's security. Mr. Teixeira enlisted in the Air National Guard in September of 2019. He was first entrusted with a top secret security clearance in July 2021. Mr. Teixeira was trained in the proper handling and storing of classified and sensitive information, including national defense information. He was instructed that the unauthorized disclosure of classified information could cause damage to our national security, and he was warned that the designation of top secret information was reserved for information that, quote, could reasonably be expected to cause exceptionally grave damage to our national security. As he admitted today, Mr. Teixeira repeatedly and flagrantly discarded these warnings. By the start of 2022, he was unlawfully removing from a secure location classified information, information that was clearly marked as secret, top secret, and SCI. SCI, or secure compartmented information, is used to denote some of our nation's most closely guarded secrets. Having illegally taken that information from secure storage facilities, Mr. Teixeira went further and he began posting classified information publicly on a social media platform. And he continued this practice until just before his arrest last April. To those of us who have spent our careers seeing firsthand the sacrifice and the dedication of our intelligence community and our national security professionals and their efforts to keep the American people safe, it has been shocking, shocking to witness the public disclosures that resulted from Mr. Teixeira's crimes. By knowingly and improperly posting classified national defense information on social media platforms, Mr. Teixeira enabled hundreds, hundreds of members of his online chat groups, including individuals it was clear to him were located overseas, to further disseminate national defense information across the Internet. In doing so, Mr. Teixeira callously disregarded the national security of the United States, and he betrayed his solemn oath to defend the country and the trust of the American people that he swore to protect. Being entrusted with a security clearance carries the responsibility to be a good steward of our nation's most sensitive information. And whether someone violates this duty by handing classified information uh, directly to a foreign adversary or by willfully posting such information online for all to see, the national security consequences are severe. And this case highlights those consequences. As a result of Mr. Teixeira's actions, our nation's adversaries, all of our adversaries, were given access to sensitive national defense information. And such unlawful disclosure damages our intelligence capabilities, it compromises our sources and methods, uh, and it blinds us to threats from hostile nations and terrorist groups. It strains our relations with our allies and partners who have entrusted us with their secrets to advance our common interests of global security and peace. And most starkly of all, it risks the lives of the men and women in uniform and those in the intelligence community who work every day to defend the nation. So a core mission of the National Security Division at the Department of Justice is to enforce the laws that protect classified and national defense information. We work in close partnership with U.S. attorneys' offices around the country and other federal agencies to hold accountable those who violate their obligations to safeguard our nation's secrets. And with today's plea, the Department of Justice holds Mr. Teixeira accountable for his actions and makes clear the gravity of the responsibility to protect classified information. I'd like to thank uh, U.S. Attorney Josh Levy, uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office here in the District of Massachusetts, as well as the National Security Division's Counterintelligence and Export Control Section uh, for their steadfast efforts to prosecute this case and bring it to a strong resolution today. 
Um, thank you also to the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of Virginia for assisting in this investigation. I would also like to recognize, Im importantly, the dedicated agents of the FBI, both the Washington, D.C. and Boston field offices who work to deliver justice in this case. And finally, I want to acknowledge the important partnership uh, with the Department of Defense, and in particular, the Naval Criminal Investigative Service, the Air Force Office of Special Investigations, and the Air Force's Office of General Counsel. Let me now turn it over to the U.S. Attorney, Josh. Thank you, Matt. Uh, as a result of Mr. Texera's plea to the willful re uh, retention and dissemination of national defense information, he's going to now spend many years behind bars. Under the plea agreement that was filed with the court today, the government intends currently to recommend a sentence of close to 17 years, 200 months in jail. Mr. Teixeira, under the plea agreement, can recommend no less than 11 months, excuse me, 11 years, it's important correction, no less than 11 years in jail. Mr. Teixeira exploited his position of trust and access hundreds of classified documents. He then posted them on a social media platform, a platform that allows anyone who wants to join, and it, it's a place where people can exchange voice messages, text messages, videos, and it purports to have over 100 million users. That's where Jack Teixeira decided to post some of our nation's most guarded secrets. He violated his duty to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. And he abused his position of trust given to him by the American government. He didn't care at all about the consequences. He was really acting for himself. And he put himself out and put documents and information out about a raging war in Europe. As was described in court today, some of the information Mr. Teixeira posted was about troop movements in Ukraine, about the provision of supplies and equipment to Ukrainian troops. He also posted information about a U.S. adversary's plans to harm U.S. forces serving abroad, a particularly despicable act. Mr. Teixeira was questioned by fellow users of the social media platform about whether what he was posting was classified information. He readily admitted that it was, and he said that he didn't care and that he wouldn't get caught. Well, Mr. Teixeira grossly underestimated the investigative powers of the FBI and the Department of Justice. And I want to commend the FBI, Washington Field Office, Boston Office, and the prosecutors from my office and from the National Security Division who deserve all the credit for making this case. They worked tirelessly from the moment this case broke, and they put together an airtight case that resulted in Mr. Teixeira accepting all the, the counts in the indictment and pleading guilty to every single count. Our government will leave no stone unturned in protecting the nation's secrets because that's how we protect the people who serve overseas, as this case demonstrates. And why do we bring these cases? Well, Jack Teixeira will never get a sniff of a classified piece of information for the rest of his life. But we also bring these cases for general deterrence. The message goes out to anyone who may be tempted to violate their position of trust, like Mr. Teixeira, that there are very, very severe consequences. And lastly, I want to close by, by thanking the men and women who serve our country in the armed services and in the intelligence community. This case is an affront to all those people who serve our country with honor and dedication and integrity and courage. I'm going to turn it over now to David Sundberg, the Assistant Director in Charge of the Washington Field Office of the FBI. Thank you, U.S. Attorney Levy, for the opportunity to be here today. I'm Dave Sundberg, Assistant Director in Charge of the FBI's Washington Field Office. Jack Texera's plea is the culmination of a year's worth of hard work in collaboration by the FBI, the Department of Justice, and our partners across the intelligence community to investigate the disclosure of classified information, identify the person behind these disclosures, and mitigate the risk and damage posed by the release of that information. Many of the documents that Mr. Texera posted online were top secret government documents containing national defense information, which, when released, can potentially cause exceptionally grave damage to the national security of this country. These documents are classified and protected for a reason, 
to safeguard U.S. intelligence information and to keep it from falling into the hands of our adversaries, who are always looking for ways to gain the upper hand. The mere fact that these documents were disclosed for any length of time puts our national security at risk. To get to where we, were, where we are today took the work of dozens of FBI employees, including special agents, intelligence analysts, and computer forensic examiners who combed through and analyzed hundreds of documents and evidentiary items. That work included carefully and methodically reviewing documents, electronic devices, and seized physical evidence. Retaining and transmitting classified information is a crime, and U.S. government employees are trusted to secure and protect that information. As a government employee, no matter what department we serve, we have a commitment to ensure that sensitive information is protected. Violating that oath and duty is a crime, and at the FBI, we are committed to identify and bring to justice those who make the choice to put our country at risk by publicly and recklessly disclosing classified information. This was a collaborative effort, not just internally, alongside our Boston field office, as well as from numerous FBI offices across the United States and internationally, who assisted us with interviews and investigative efforts, but also from the entire intelligence community. On behalf of the FBI, I would want to specifically thank the U.S. Attorney's offices in the Eastern District of Virginia and in the District of Massachusetts, the National Security Division of the Department of Justice, and our partners at the Air Force Office of Special Investigations and the Naval Criminal Investigative Service for all of their investigative efforts on this case. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce the special agent in charge of our Boston field office, Jody Cohen. Thank you, Dave. Good afternoon. I am Jody Cohen, the special agent in charge of the FBI Boston field office. When you think of some of our biggest national security threats we face, China, Russia, and Iran come to mind. You wouldn't think a 21-year-old National Air Guardsman who took an oath to defend our country and the Constitution would make the list. But today, Jack Testera admitted to endangering our national security and betraying our country. Time after time, Mr. Texera illegally removed, retained, and recirculated hundreds of highly sensitive top secret documents online, including national defense information that was gathered through classified sources and methods, all of which this IT specialist had pledged to protect. He knew what he was doing was wrong, and he did it anyway. He tried to obstruct the investigation by destroying evidence and tampering witnesses. Mr. Texera's actions are a stark contrast to the pledge he made in 2019 to uphold the Air Force's core values, integrity first, service over self, and excellence in all we do. Being granted a top secret security clearance by the United States government to safeguard information on our military bases is a tremendous privilege and responsibility. Failure to uphold that responsibility is a direct threat to our national security. Investigations involving, involving violations of the Espionage Act are among the most complicated cases the FBI works. It requires interagency coordination, patience, and secrecy. When classified information is accessible to foreign governments without authorization, this could cause grave damage to national security. The FBI takes this, these breaches seriously, and we use all the resources at our disposal to identify and apprehend those who jeopardize the safety of our country and its citizens. In closing, this investigation was a team effort between FBI's Boston and Washington field offices, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank all the FBI employees for extremely hard work and dedication. I'd also like to thank Assistant Attorney General Matt Olson and Acting U.S. Attorney Josh Levy for their partnership. I will now turn it back over to the Acting U.S. Attorney Josh Levy. Josh, can you comment on the amount of time and why not take the case to trial? Because if you really cause public harm, why the 11 to 17 versus the 60 that he could face? And he'll be out when he's 30 years old, which would be a young guy. And, you know, what do you think? Well, several questions in better than there. Uh, I think the, 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 the sentencing range uh, partly reflects the United States sentencing guidelines, which determine how, uh, in part, how sentences are, are fashioned in, in federal court. That, that's really 
the initial starting point for any judge in, in constructing a sentence, not the statutory maximums, which put a ceiling on what you could potentially be, be charged be, or be sentenced with. So we looked at those guidelines we, and we, we applied the enhancements that we thought were appropriate, came up with a range, and we're recommending a sentence that um, is either above that range or um, uh, in, the, in that range, depending exactly how the court comes out on one, on one issue. Are you absolutely convinced there's no espionage? Well, it depends what you mean by espionage. Are you absolutely convinced that he wasn't leaking this intentionally to help one of our adversaries and that he was just posting it online to show off? Yeah. Is implied? Uh, I think that you can uh, rest assured that we fully investigated this matter, all possible leads. Do you know his motivation, though, if it wasn't espionage? Do you know what his motivation is? So motivation is not an element of, of a crime we need to prove. Um, and. Um, so I, I, I'm not going to speculate on exactly what was his motivation. I think that's uh, something that, that he, he truly knows. Uh, we, we followed the leads where they went and, and tracked down where the information went to make sure we had a full handle on, on the impact of his conduct. How concerned are you that there are other people who could do what he did, seeing that he faced almost no obstacles to removing information for more than a year from the Take that one. I want to. Sure. I mean, first of all, the the. The resolution in this case, I think, clearly reflects the gravity of, of Mr. Teixeira's crimes um, and the fact that he faces a sentencing range of 132 to 200 months, and we've indicated clearly in the plea agreement that our intention today is to recommend a, a sentence of 200 months, uh, again, reflecting the gravity uh, of this case. Um, more broadly, uh, in response to your question, um, the Defense Department is undertaking a thorough review of how it monitors the access uh, to such information. Um, we've participated and supported that review and other questions about that, I'd actually refer you uh, to the Defense Department. For our part at the National Security Division, for the U.S. Attorney's offices, for the Department of Justice, more broadly, our responsibility is to hold people accountable who violate their oath and commit crimes under the Espionage Act by accessing and disclosing such information. Are you confident that you got um, everything? I know there was a search for other information that might be out there. He tried to destroy, he destroyed some of the tools on his iPad. Um, but did you get anything? Was he cooperative in helping you retrieve information that could take his? You know, one of the reasons this case is so serious is that once things are posted on the Internet, shared on the Internet, it's almost impossible to track down what happens to every, every document on the Internet. Uh, we took every step we, we reasonably could take uh, to make sure that we um, retrieved any uh, improperly disclosed information. Based on what you know, should he have been a candidate to have this type of clearance to begin with? I mean, because clearly, looking at his past, I mean, he had somewhat of a checkered past if anyone had done more checking into his past. I mean, should this guy have been given this type of clearance at all? Yeah, so the, the Department of Justice, certainly the U.S. Attorney's Office in Massachusetts, but I think I even speak for uh, the National Security Division, we, that's not the office that issues clearances. I think that's a, that's a question that's more appropriately directed at the agencies that, that, um, that yeah. issue clearances. I, mean, you know, I yeah. recognize that, but you guys are here. I mean, you, you yeah. see, you're the one. I mean, and you know what this case is about. You know who this young man is. I mean, accused of very serious crimes. And when you look at his recent past, I mean, just a simple check could have shown speaking to some of the people that he knew, I'm assuming when you get a top security clearance, you know, you check into people's past, so you ask who they know. Yep. I mean, the, the signs were there that he was not exactly an upstanding guy. Yeah, I, I'm going to respectfully not share my opinion of, of what, what should or shouldn't have been done several years ago when they were assessing, making that assessment. Um, I think that's more directed to the, more appropriately directed to the the officers that make those decisions. He's well, to the sentencing guidelines, but actually, can you clarify again um, why go this route with the plea deal in lieu of a trial? What was the risk of, of going with the trial route instead? So, when 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 we charge someone with an indictment returned by a grand jury, and that individual is prepared to plead guilty to all six felonies in the indictment, uh, the all, all that would happen at a trial is the person would be convicted of all six felonies in the indictment. So this is not a case where the government's dropping uh, certain charges in the indictment uh, to, to, to secure a plea agreement. Uh, the defendant is pleading to all charges in the indictment. Um, he's being sentenced according with, with the sentencing guidelines. Yeah, uh, well, uh, 
That's correct. Any any tr any uh, case, uh, uh, any trial in this in this sphere has to take into account the fact we're dealing with classified information. Um, I'm not going to get into why how we made the decision in this case. Uh, we had a defendant who was who was prepared to plead guilty to all six felonies that we charged him with, and we proceeded with that. Would you even if you, if you did go to trial? Here? So Judge Talwani is the one who decides what the, what the sentence is, uh, certainly not the government. Um, mathematically, you're correct. You could stack uh, uh, charges like that. Realistically, what happens in federal court is the judge, and you heard we have a six-month uh, period between the plea uh, and the sentencing, and that's the time when the probation department is doing its work and preparing a lengthy pre-sentence report that analyzes the guidelines. Uh, and those guidelines uh, we expect will come out exactly where the plea agreement comes out. And that's not binding on the court, as the judge said in court today, but that's their starting point. Um, so we think we would uh, be right where we are right now with, with a significant difference that a, uh, a, an individual who pleads guilty in the, under the sentencing guidelines receives a, what we call a three-point credit um, for accepting responsibility. So if someone goes to trial, they don't get that three-point credit. So the, the guidelines may shift after a trial, but we're, we, we'd be in the same, in the same ballpark. It's frustrating given how, how, how serious this is, given how serious this is, and the type of information that was shared, that was put out there for anybody to see, is it frustrating? Do you feel hamstringed by 200 months, considering um, what you're dealing with here, and the message that it might send to others? Yeah, uh, I'll repeat what Assistant Attorney General Olson said. This is a, a very serious sentence, uh, and we, we think this sends a powerful deterrent message when someone who's uh, a first offender is, is going to receive a sentence uh, of close to 17 years if the government prevails in its recommendation, or, or at least 11 years uh, based on uh, what the defendant is bound to. So that, that's a serious hit, um, and uh, we, we feel that this sends a powerful message. So we, 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 a couple more questions. Yeah. Any other criminal targets? Determine if his information was able to be used by a foreign adversary, or is there any consequence to what you I missed the first part of the question. Were you able to determine, given what, what you said about how hard it is to track stuff that's online, were you able to determine if the information you leaked was able to be used by a foreign government or if there was a consequence to what you put online other than just people from people from the Yeah. We had a team of um, really phenomenal investigators at the FBI, uh, analysts and agents and prosecutors working on this case for the past 11 months. I'm not going to get into what we did and what we didn't do, uh, but uh, we, we take very seriously uh, the violation of trust engaged in by the defendant and did everything in our power to, to track that down, are the consequences. Are you, are, you, are you confident that you have a full picture of all the intelligence that you share uh, access without authorization based on those logs that were mentioned today in court, or is there other materials that you've had access to that you may have gone on to share online? Um, or if you access to some other way, have other sources that you can use to There's a, term, there's a term in the plea agreement requiring a debriefing with the intelligence community, the Department of Defense, and the Department of Justice. Um, and you know, we're going to continue to to uh, to work on this. We've we've accessed all available information to try and track down uh, the consequences of this. But I'm not going to get into the details of where we are in that okay, process. One, one last thing: the uh, the mass shootings. I, I mean, there's you know, obviously that wasn't a charge, but it was part of the concern about why he was held without bail. That he was online, you know, talking about ISIS and. Any evidence that he was planning anything from all of your investigation? Are you satisfied that you you uncovered and you know that there wasn't anything? Yeah, this this uh, that was certainly important consideration in, in um, when we sought to detain the defendant uh, pen, pending trial or pending uh, pending the resolution. I'm not going to get into any comments about where those investigative leads went. Okay, thank you guys. Should he still be court martialed?